Hi y'all, Liz here with Smart Business Moves. And look at, we've got new faces on here. No Tom, he's out on vacation. For those of you that are thinking, what? Tom does go on vacation every once in a while. But we have a co-host today. We have Denise from Two Buckets Cleaning. Hi Denise. Hi, I'm so excited to be here, Liz. Thanks for asking me to co-host. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. We talk a lot, so I thought it'd be fun to have you on here. And then we have our a wonderful guest, Chris Schwab, that has been on a few times, right, Chris? But uh, we were trying to figure out how long it's been, and we can't figure it out because the numbers that we come up with are not possible. We don't believe it could possibly be two and a half years. <laughs> well, we've, gosh, oh, we have been doing it for a long time, so I don't know. But Chris... Tell us a little bit about um, where you are right now and what time it is and what you're up to. Sure. Yeah. So thank, first of all, I always appreciate you guys having me on. It's always a good chat. Um, you know, I was, I was telling my management team yesterday, I'm not going to be available for them at this time. I'm usually walking the dog at this time and I check Slack and stuff. And I said, I'm going to be on, I, I actually got it. I got it wrong. I said cleaning business today to them instead of made central, but, but, I said cleaning business today tomorrow in, in writing i said i'm going to be on the cleaning business today podcast tomorrow and they said is that the name today tomorrow show and i said no i'm going to be on clean business today comma tomorrow so a lot of a uh, lot of um uh, what, what would you call it um not no, on the ball we need punctuation yes no no punctuation and i'm, I'm mixing up my my names here well, so you're gonna laugh when i tell you this because i think that you think the name of this program is made central don't you oh no <laughs> so you're gonna hit me, with it. It. hit me with it here smart business moves smart business move see i got smart business moves in the title but then i got a made central email someone from so. <laughs> yeah so sarah our organizer she works for made central also so that's what it is. Okay. Right. Okay. We've all got multiple businesses. So when we're all emailing from our different business email addresses, it gets very confusing. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. Yep. So smart business moves is um, made. Uh, it's probably, I guess, hosted by Tom and me central and me with core profit builders. So kind of these two, two companies are, are hosting smart business moves. I apologize. <laughs> no, no worries at all. None, none at all. We barely can keep it straight. We've been doing it daily for, or actually we're only doing it weekly now. So we mm. did daily for a, a year and then we switched over to a couple of times a week and now we're down to once a week that we're doing it. But that's, it's been a long haul here. That's a good balance. Daily is, that's a little tough. It's a little tough. We're doing another thing daily right now. Um, uh, my daily lizards that I'm doing uh, <laughs> is actions repeatedly done to lead to success, right? This is, these are what mm. lizards are and they are a lot of work doing them every single day, but I'm, I'm committed for at least a year. Good. So, yeah. I love the name. <laughs> Crazy. Um, uh, my marketing guy came up with it. Don from market pros. I, I love him. He's so creative. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I've done videos before I, I made at one point in time, I made daily engagement videos to be shown to uh, team members and cleaning professionals. They're just short little videos that you could show to your people to help them do a better job. And I made 603 of those. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm feeling like I'll be okay with, with this for commitment for just a year. It seems small <laughs> in comparison. <laughs> That's a lot of batch content. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was a lot. I can only imagine much coffee was consumed, but uh. yeah. <laughs> um, they're they're not heavily produced, let's say, so they might not be uh, as time. Uh, they didn't take as much time to produce as you might think, because I pretty much film and post, film and post. Not a lot of editing, minor minor editing. Yeah. That's, that's me too. I film it. I don't even cut. I just say, here you go, guys. <laughs> here, take it. take it away. That's it. Okay. Bye y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, all right. So Chris, what are, what are we planning on talking about today? Sure. So, um, 
the four evolutionary stages that uh, your cleaning business needs to go through before you can become an absentee owner. That's kind of what we have, I think, planned for today. So I've got a few notes. Um, I walk people through this type of thing regularly. It's not always specifically absentee, but it's often going remote, living in a different country than your cleaning business. And those two models being absentee or being remote, they're kind of 85, 90% the same. There's a few differences in, in terms of personal involvement, but it's a it's a very similar model. And so I thought it'd be cool for us to talk today about just the different stages that people tend to progress through as if it was a linear line. Nothing is linear in business, but as if it was a linear line from, you know, the beginning stages of your business all the way to kind of a, a bigger business where you have someone running it for you. So I think that that's kind of what we have planned today. Wonderful. That sounds great. Yeah, it does. Um, but before we get started, Chris, why don't you give me your website? And then while you get started, I will pull it up and I will share with everyone so that anybody wants to get in contact with you. Because I know as soon as you start talking, they're going to be like, how do I get in contact with them? Yeah, apologies in advance. I always feel like we talk about so much, there always has to be a part two. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So so website, a uh, little difficult. I've got a couple, but the I think the one that I, I use the most that people can contact me on is innovalocal.com. And I'll type the URL in the, the chat box. But if okay. I put it in the comments box, does everyone see that? Or is that just for you? No, but if you put it to me, then okay. I'll go ahead and I will uh, post the link to it. Sure. For everybody. So I dropped that in the, in the, the host chat. Um, so that's the URL. That's that's just my VA company, but that's also got my email on it. That's where people can connect with me most easily. So so if they go there, that's that's really the root, or just Facebook. If you if you Google my name on Facebook and or you go to Liz and you go to Mutual Friends, you'll find me there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, easy. All right, sounds good. So go ahead and you are going to share a little bit, aren't you, about the difference between or why it might well the different you said that there are some subtle differences between being, um, um, uh, I'm not sure actually, sure. remote yeah. versus actually absent. just absent. Ah, so you just want me to define, the, sure. So, Go ahead, Denise, what were you going to say? Yeah, it'd be nice for you to define it because there is a slight difference in, you know, um, each of those terms. Sure. So, um, at least in my mind, the way I think about it, when I think about um, a remote owner, it's someone who's running their company geographically from a different location than the company is based in. But they can still be very involved in the company. They can still be working on it every day and growing it and and still really managing it. Whereas an absentee owner, you know, they might be in a different location. They might be living in the same location, uh, but their involvement in the company is minimal. They tend to have a management team running it. They have uh, managers and assistants and, and a team who are actually handling everything day to day for them so that their level of involvement can be minimal or almost non-existent, but the business is still able to function without them. So it's, it's more, um, that's what I mean by remote versus absentee is, is it's kind of at that point, it's your level of involvement. A lot of absentee owners, they may have two or three or five businesses, but they're only focused on one at the, at one at a time and their teams are running the other businesses, for example. So, uh, that's that's kind of in my mind how I differentiate between the two. Perfect. That's exactly how I see it. So that works really well for me. Uh, it's a struggle when the guest is talking about something that's not the same as what I have in my mind. <laughs> then I'm like I'm trying to get on board here. All right. Now take us through or at least start us through these four stages. Sure. So um there's a couple different frames I use for this. I think the simplest one is to start from uh, a beginning cleaning company. But just as a, a quick reference, I, I wanted to do a 20, 30 second mention of another frame of reference for uh, how I describe this to people, depending on the stage that they're at in their business. So um, the first kind of lens that I look at this through is if you're a, I'm sorry, just, just one second. My dog is chewing my chair. I'm going to move the chair. Um, <laughs> that I apologize. Even... Okay. it's it's normally her walk time i got up early to play with her but uh she oh, wants the like, attention so still time to go for a walk dad come on now she's she's six months so she's still oh. firmly in the <laughs> firmly in the puppy stage yeah, um puppy. okay she should be good now but if you hear barking <laughs> uh <laughs> 
if you're barking, it's going to happen. <laughs> so, um, okay. Um, evolutionary stages. So, so there's kind of, uh, four main stages that cleaning business owners tend to go through. This is, uh, very generic. Um, but there's a lot of in between each of the stages. The first, when you start your cleaning company, you you're typically cleaning in the field still. And your main goal is to establish a recurring base of clients, right? You're not even thinking about getting out of the field. You're thinking about survival and income and making sure that you have enough houses and you know those families really well. And they're just, they're a part of your regular weekly service that you're doing. Yeah. Um, this is kind of the first very beginning stage. Um, the second stage is where you kind of get out of the field. Um, and this is the first stage of my four stages is, is, is getting out of the day to day cleaning. So you're making this gradual transition out. Maybe you hire a part-time cleaner to come clean some of the houses with you. And you, you know, you gradually introduce each home to that cleaner and then you kind of start to take yourself out. But, but however you do it, you're getting out of the field of cleaning yourself so that you can start to manage the day to day, the office, the marketing a little bit more. So getting out of the field is this, is this kind of first uh, stage of evolution that's really big in your business where you notice that it's evolved into something else. It's kind of evolved beyond yourself into a team. Um, this Sorry, is the first four. Now, right? Sorry? It's actually starting to be a company at this stage. Yes, yes. You're, you've, you, you're a company, you've got cleaners, you've got clients who you might never meet in person. Um, you might, you know, uh, many I know do personal walkthroughs, still I don't. So most of our clients I've never met or talked to on the phone. Um, they, they may email me if there's a big issue, but, but that's rare. So, so you start to become a business that's, you're the face of the business, but you're not the one going out and doing the service anymore. Um, and I, I find a lot of people kind of straddle this stage for years where they're still, you know, they've managed to get out of the cleaning part time. But some of the time, if a cleaner doesn't show up or someone's sick, they're still going out and doing it themselves. And so they're still, they're so still kind of in the field, you know? Yeah, they keep getting pulled back in. And, yeah. and it's, it's tough. You know, two houses a day is tough, but two houses and then handling the business is just exhausting. And I, I find this is the big one where people get really stuck for a long time. And it may yeah. be years. It, it's not months. It's typically five or seven or eight years where they're just kind of, they feel that they can't finally get out of that stage, right? So this is um, the first evolution. And we, we can talk about each of these if you want, um, just giving kind of a quick overview of them. Sure. This is kind of the first evolution your business has to go through. And the second one is um, systemizing your business so that you're running it more efficiently. And so this is kind of, this is a little bit, um, I think newer the past 10 to 15 years in our industry. Many people uh, like myself start the business without being a cleaner. Right. It's common for people in our industry now to have not been a cleaner and then progressed on to becoming a clean, cleaning business owner. Right. Many people first business or, or after a long career in the corporate world, they're starting a cleaning business now without that experience. So this second stage might be the first stage for them. Right. It really depends where you're coming from. Um, but this second stage is where you start to actually make your business run a little bit more efficiently. You start to get a handle on the chaos. You've got a marketing system. You've got a client retention system. You have a system for hiring people consistently, or at least semi-consistently, depending on how quickly you're growing. So you've got these kind of core systems in place where you've got a framework on how to actually run your business. So it's not just crazy all the time. Yeah. And this is kind of the second big evolution that you go through where you're starting to make that transition from chaos to order, but in your business. Um, so that's as philosophical as I'm ever going to get, I think, but <laughs> um, we're, we're all down. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> wise words. But um, no, no. So, so that's kind of the second stage that I see it is 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 realizing that you can't do everything yourself, and you have to start to rely on some of the great softwares and the great tools out there that we have. And um, once you've got to this stage, you find that you're able to grow a little bit more, which is great. But you're still prohibited by being one person managing the office. You're still human. Even with all the tools in the world set up perfectly, you're still one person handling a lot every day. Um, and everyone still wants your time. Customers want your time. Cleaners want your time. Vendors want your time. It's still you. Yeah. Um, and so this is something I got from Derek Christian. I think I mention this every talk. Um, yeah, I think it's so perfect. Um, he met, he talked to me early on about the cleaning valley of despair, which is where I was at when I talked to him. 
And this is kind of the 20 to $50,000 a month revenue range where you're growing and it's busy, but you're starting to drop the ball everywhere because it's just, it's a lot. <laughs> um, and you tend to get stuck in this stage. This is the other big stage I find people get stuck at for, for months or years is there is they feel that they're growing a lot, but they keep slipping back down and they're afraid to hire an admin because they would have to take a personal pay cut at that stage because the business isn't earning enough profit yet, even though it's very busy in order to justify that uh, hiring of an office team. And so I find a lot of people get stuck here because they're unable to make that jump or justify it to themselves that this is a necessary stage of growth to actually get to the next stage. Yeah. Um, it's this, it's, it's actually growing truly beyond yourself this time, because you may have got out of cleaning, you may have some systems that support you, but this is the stage where you actually make it grow beyond yourself, managing everything. If we're um, still in stage two, correct? Yes, it's, this is kind of a transition to stage three, though, where you're, where you, where you finally do make the jump to hiring an office team, it could be a VA, it could be an office manager, it could be a lead cleaner who can take on some of that help. But yeah. you're, you're bringing someone in who can facilitate your work as an owner, but in an office capacity. And so this is where you're learning to find and hire and train that team. where you are teaching them how to be self accountable. This is kind of the big daily admin stage where you actually get out of the daily admin. So this is um, this would be the third of the, the four stages is is becoming um, less necessary to your business, which is one of the most important things you have to realize is you have to become unnecessary to your business if it's going to thrive long term. You can jump in and help it grow, but if you're always necessary for it, you're never going to be able to walk away from it for any period of time. So, you know, I really love the way you're wording this, Chris, because I think that one of the things that is hardest for people to do, and the reason why they struggle right here is their sense of identity. They've worked for so long in this business and they've, they've been the face, they've done everything. They've been so important and they've found their identity here. So trying to shed that at this stage is so difficult. People feel just so unimportant and mm -hmm. unnecessary. And it's, it's a hard, hard little shift for a lot of people. Oh yeah. Yeah. And Denise, I'm sure you found the exact same thing as well as you've gone through it. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to mention is um, I think up to this point for a lot of people, their systems, their operations are kind of still in their head, right? Because they've yeah. done it themselves all this time. And all of a sudden you get to this third stage and you're like, oh my God, you know, how do I open the office in the morning or, you know, so I, I think part of it is being able to teach somebody else. And that's a whole, you know, that's a whole, uh, you know, party in a box. Kind yeah. of. <laughs> I like oh, that yeah. in a box. <laughs> this, is, this is a whole other conversation I have strong thoughts around, but many people just hire an office manager or a VA and, and throw a bunch of work at them and say, do a good job. And then they don't do a good job because right. they, they weren't given the tools to do a good job um right. so but that that's a different thing that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole three hour talk right there um <laughs> uh, step two, stage two <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but you're right a lot of people they take a long time where they have to write things down and, and they have to learn how to turn that into something usable by another person who's not them who doesn't have the context uh, they have to learn how to and this is a big one i find is and it, it's not anyone's fault. I think it's natural. Your business is your baby. And when you bring someone on to help, you micromanage them at first because you're oh. afraid that they're going to mess something up or they're going to book someone into the system wrong or they're going to assign the wrong team to the wrong type of house. And you're going to go, oh, no, that's, that's $300 I could have earned. How could you do that? You know, there's, oh. there's so much emotion that comes up when you're trying to allow someone to come into your business for you. Um, and that's, that's a very hard, very hard thing emotionally more than anything else, I think. Yeah, I uh, totally agree. I, I think that it's the same type. Uh, it depends on, okay, so I have too many thoughts going through my head all at the same time. So it's <laughs> similar to when you're getting out of the field and you have to let other people do it. 
They're not going to be able to clean as well. They'll never be as good as you. The reason why your company is so successful is because you personally are such a good cleaner and no, you can't find anybody because nobody works as hard as you do. Nobody cares as much. You just, I see so many people that get stuck there and they have to let go of that. Same thing at this stage is now that you're in the, in the, you have people in the office. Now they don't input. They don't think about the customers as clearly or as compassionately. They don't know the little tiny things like Mrs. Johnson's dog barks every time. It doesn't mean that the dog is scary. You still have to go, you know, all of the, all of the stuff. And they just feel like nobody's going to be as good as they are, which is again, part of that identity thing. It's like, ah, this yeah. is my identity. I can't let go. It's a huge one. And I can speak a little bit personally to this. Um, well, I'll keep it to two minutes. I want to get it too off track. Um, a big part of my identity, the first, first couple of years in business was the whole remote business thing, right? That's kind of why people know me. I moved to Japan and I live there and everything. And I, I found that I found that, uh, when I looked deeper into that, um, that, that wasn't really an identity. What it was, was it was, uh, how do I describe this? Um, No, I don't think I can do it in two minutes. So <laughs> go ahead. You have more. It's only 223. We have plenty of time. Yeah. Um, basically, I, I think a lot of people, business is so all consuming. It's just, it takes everything from you, all your attention, your focus and your energy. It, a lot of people's friendships suffer, their relationships suffer. They give everything to their business and they become very focused on the goals of the business of growth and profit. And there's nothing wrong with that. When you're growing a business, you do have to go through that stage for a little bit where you it just consumes you. But I think because it consumes you so much, you start to lose other essential parts of your identity. And it can be hard to find them again when you do find that you have more time. When you finally do reach a stage in your business where you're actually able to give some space to yourself again mentally and, and just in terms of actual time, um, you find that you need to rediscover those parts of yourself. But it needs to be a conscious effort. And if you don't put that conscious effort in, you're just going to be all business all the time. And it's it's very intense for the people that you work with if that's the only mode that you can work in anymore. Um, and I'm just speaking from personal experience here, too. That's that's it. it you really have to work at uh, facilitating the other parts of your life and continuing to keep them even when you're in the thick of business. Otherwise, it's just you're going to come out the other end and, and uh, it's going to be tough to rebuild everything else from your life from scratch. If business is going well, you have to make sure that your health is still being taken care of. You know, there's so many components to running a successful business, but it needs to be one part of your life. It cannot be all of your life, I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I, I agree. And I can also attest to having lived through this myself. And um, like in my situation, I became a like, the only thing that I really had in my life was cleaning. The only thing, really, like uh, other than, you know, the, the things that I needed for survival, right? right. Eating and, and bathing and other than survival, my only interest was uh, family, right? My kids. But then even then, mm -hmm. just my, my immediate family, not my mom, not my, you know, not my family that lives 10 10 miles from me, not, not them, just my immediate family, because they were part of, of what I needed to be able to get through the day. Um, but when you trying to get out of the other side of it, who are you? That's what I mean by identity. I was in that for so long. I, I had no other, I, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what I cared about. I didn't know what I liked. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I was interested in. I was interested in cleaning. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and I, I, I feel like that's, I see a lot of people in that, in that mode and struggle. Uh, you know, who doesn't, you know, who has never really done this. And I'm always so admire her is uh, Sarah Mitchell. Oh yeah. Yep. Sarah Mitchell from day one, always knew what she wanted out of her business. She mm -hmm. wanted a business that she could have that would, be able to create a life for her and her family. She wanted to revolve her entire life around 
caring for her kids and her family and spending time with them, valuable time with them while they're young. And she's done it every step of the way. She sacrificed profit. She sacrificed she sacrificed everything to be able to have that time with her, her family. She's the only person I've ever seen do this successfully. And now she's running, uh, I don't know, two, probably $2 million company somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've awesome. never got the opportunity to speak, but I, I really want to, because I've seen her progression in the group over years, you know, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, hundred thousand. I'm like, wow, Sarah, you're really, you really yeah. take it off, you know? Yeah. She's doing it. And, She's off for the summer right now. She's yeah. off. That's yeah. perfect. She's around for the I summer. Love Sarah. And she has uh, she has hired a strong support team. So even when she's here in town, uh, currently I think she meets with her team once a week for an hour. So mm, she's, she's that's really good. good. Yeah, she's wow. doing a great she got job. it dialed in. Yeah, she's doing a great job. Huh. Anyway, cool. yeah, yeah. Most totally of us right. are not. not focused and uh, committed to 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 that end goal that we're looking for. She really had that vision though. You know, she had that vision so much stronger than most people. Most people think, I just, my gosh, even today, I, same, same story from five years ago. Just want to get that million dollar mark, million dollar revenue, right? You yep. still hear it today, right, Chris? I just talked to somebody yesterday that was saying that. I just want to get the million dollar in revenue. Wow, okay. Still a thing. You know, it's very funny. I don't, I don't mention my revenue anymore yet. That's the first question people ask me. I, they say, how is Japan? How, how big is your business now? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, man, you're asking me wrong questions right now. Yeah. Um, well, Liz, doesn't that take us to this weekend when I was telling yeah. you that, you know, I run into people and one of the first questions is how many cleaners do you have? And I'm like, ho, 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 let's just, I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> yep. That's it. Humanity first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people. People are. I. I feel like that's um, not unusual. People want to know how other people are doing. Right? How are you doing? And if you are really mired in this business, if this is all you do and all you know and who you are, it's the only thing you know to ask. Right? right. All you know to ask is. How is your business? How many cleaners do you have? How many clients do you have? How much do you charge per hour? Yeah. If you if you start answering one question, there's going to be 20 questions because that's what they care about. It's the whole life is wrapped up in that. The, the stage that's is right. a tough stage to get out of. Yeah. Because yeah. of that. And, and not to extend it too long, I'd like to add one more thing about this stage that, that might yeah. be helpful to people, might not. But um, one of the realizations I had when I started my business, and this goes back to Sarah a little bit actually, is making sure you write down and really get clear on the reasons that you're starting your business. One of the things I, I, I did was I had a very clear goal in mind, which I achieved, but I didn't have anything after that. And so what I mean is my goal when I started my business was to be able to move to Japan and be with my wife, was girlfriend at the time, wife now. Um, and that was, it was a clear goal that I could work like crazy towards. But, but what I was actually doing was escaping from something rather than escaping to something. I was escaping from my current life situation in DC, escaping a traditional nine to five job to jo try and be with my wife. I didn't have any plan after that. It was, it was build a business, get over to Japan, and then whatever happens after happens. I didn't have a long-term thing. And I think that's the true for a lot of people who say, I wanna build a million dollar business. Right. Okay, but after the million dollar business, and for me, it was what's after moving to Japan. I've, I've done it now, like what's life? And I spent a couple of years kind of not really knowing what my long-term vision was or what I actually want to do. And so I was just kind of growing the businesses and just kind of, it, in hindsight to me, I feel like I was wasting my time personally on, on, on vanity metrics in my business. Um, and those don't really matter. And so I think when you're, when you're serious about your business, you have to know how the business fits into the bigger picture of your life and what the ultimate goal with it is. Not the revenue metric or, or the fancy number, but what is the ultimate goal that your business is, is giving to you? What is it actually providing that enables everything else that you care about? So um, I just wanted to add that because I think, uh, like me, a lot of others, 
it, they have a big important business goal and it's impressive when they hit it, but then once they hit it, they just don't really know what to do. And it, and, and you should get clear on that before you hit it. Cause if you're not, you're not really going to know what to do with yourself. That's a really good point, Chris. Thank you for bringing that up. I think that's uh, a lot of people I talk to are, including myself sometimes, are stuck kind of in that. Where do we go next? Well, y'all are going to see, for anybody that watches any of my lizards, you are going to see me looking exactly like this with these earrings, these same lips, these glasses, <laughs> talking about this exact topic because that is the lizard that I filmed two minutes before I jumped on this call. Wonderful. <laughs> So, so yes, I really, and I'll just, I'll just drop it here since it will have, the lizard will have already landed by that time. Mm. Um, the action for that lizard was to sit down with yourself, give yourself 15 minutes to 30 minutes at a minimum and think about what is your life going to look like? Not not what is your business going to look like? What is your life going to look like? What will you be doing when your business is what you consider to be successful? Right? What will you be doing? Will you be sitting at home watching TV? Will you be running another business? Will you? What will you be doing? What What's that going to look like to you? And if you can't get it done in 15 minutes to 30 minutes, you probably won't. Then <laughs> the next day sit down for another 15 to 30 minutes until you sort of design a life because I, and the reason I created this lizard is because I talk to so many people on a regular basis, especially people in my mastery circle that have achieved a certain level of success and they're depressed. I'm mm -hmm. um, not clinically depressed. Of course, I'm not saying that, but they're, they're bummed. They're down. They, they, they hit this goal and now what? They just, they lose their momentum. They lose their motivation. They lose their enthusiasm and excitement. They just, now what? So you got to sort of put that plan in place beforehand. So speaking to exactly this thing that we're talking about. If I, if I may provide a book recommendation, I think might be good for the lizards. Um, there's a it's it's not a business book at all, but but it's very very relatable to business and how it how it's run today. There's a famous uh, psychologist called Eric Fromm. Mm -hmm. uh, Eric is spelled a little bit strange. It's E R I C H, and Fromm is F R O double M. Uh, it's called Escape uh, Escape uh, from Freedom or Escape to Freedom. I'm I'm forgetting which one it is right now. But uh, somebody recommended this to me not that long ago. It's, it's a really fascinating book. He takes you through the psychological development of the concept of freedom and what it meant to people at different stages in, in the human story. Yeah. And he talks about uh, mm -hmm. how we've gone from a freedom from, like freedom from tyranny, freedom yeah. from oppression, freedom from constraints in our life to a freedom to mindset in modern society, um, where we should be aiming toward a freedom to do something with ourselves. But many people nowadays, what we do is is we 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 want to unfetter ourselves. We want to unshackle ourselves from some commitment or some debt situation or some other situation in our life that we don't want to be held down by. And yeah. so our goal is often to to escape that thing that we don't like. We want to get freedom from that thing that we don't like, mm -hmm. but we don't have a plan for what we want to go towards. We don't have a, a plan for what we want to be free to do. And uh, I think it's a it's a helpful expansion on our talk. It goes into this a lot more in depth than, than we have, of course, in, in you know, 30, 40 minutes. But, um, but it's a really interesting kind of psychological journey on what freedom means to you and what you might want to take out of that to, to actually, as you're planning for your business and the goal of it, it's, it's just, I think, a helpful book to read to, to add some depth to this conversation. So um, take, take, if you get a chance, take a read of it. It's a little dense. But it's not it's not like an academic textbook or anything. It's just a it's just a little dense because it's an old book. Well, I I think it's meant to be that I read this because you're the second person that has recommended it to me. So I'm I'm getting it. I do yeah. love to read. So this I guess this is my next book here. I'm excited. <laughs> 
it's it's kind of a self it's not it's not it's not like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but in a sense, it's kind of a self-actualizing type of thing. If okay. you if you have a freedom from something, once you're free from it, you don't know what to do. But right. if you're if you have freedom to go towards a higher goal, you will always be able to work towards that higher goal. So I think that's what it is. Have a higher goal. Thing there for you. I'm loving the idea of it. I mean, yeah. based on what you're telling telling us and what you're sharing, it sounds like you're not just left bereft because there's always that thing out there that you're moving toward, which Correct. we need, right? So I love that idea. Well, Denise, that going back to this last weekend again, we had talked about the, I, and I think Tim, my husband had brought up how it's one of the problems when people retire, right? Is now they have no purpose. Now right. they have nothing, nothing to work toward. And there's some research, there's quite a bit of research out there saying that people who work longer or at least keep working, have some purpose, live a lot longer than people who don't. So it seems to all be tied in together there. I like yes. it. And I, I think the reason we spent so much time on that stage is because it's so psychological and so mental, right? Like yeah. when you're getting out of the cleaning, it's so time and energy intensive. Yeah. But when you're getting out of the daily admin, it, it is time intensive, of course, but it's mentally intensive. It takes up your mental space. And so so thinking this through is it's important, yeah. But but uh, should I should I mention the fourth stage or should we? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. we'll probably uh, not for two. I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot for you, but uh, as always, well, there's there's never enough time to get through it all, right? Um, so the fourth and final stage, once you've got the daily admin sorted, once you've got someone helping you manage the office, is to um, train them to be self accountable. It's to train them to actually be able to be independent and run it by themselves. And this is this is kind of the final, there's a fifth kind of optional stage I can talk about briefly if you want, but this is kind of the final stage of the four evolutionary model that I want to talk you guys through is, is now that you've got the office team, they may be doing the tasks for you, but they're still looking to you for direction and leadership. And they're still um, very dependent on you to fix issues or mistakes or handle emergencies. And so they're, they're not independent yet. You're still managing them. You're still a manager in some sense. You're just a higher level manager now. You're managing the managers, but you're not you're not an absentee owner, right? Absentee means your team can do it themselves and you and you know that they can do it and you're not sitting there at 2 a.m. worrying about it. Um, and, and so the final. One more real quick thing I have to add on there, Chris, because a lot of times when we're talking about this, people are like, but I am there. But unless your company is continuing to grow, you're not there because oh, they're yeah. not doing it, right? That's what happens. People get out before they're actually at this stage and the company can keep going. It can hold itself together until it begins to decline, but it can't grow. They, oh, they haven't been taught how to do that, right? Yeah. You, you took the words out of my mouth. That was the fifth yeah. optional stage. No, no, this is good. I'm yeah. glad we're, we're, we're on exactly the same thread right now. So. So this is this is the thing I find with a lot of people, and we talked about this a couple of years ago. I know on on the chat is a lot of people will hire a VA or a manager, and then they'll get out because they haven't had a break in ten years, and then they become mentally disengaged from their business because yeah. they finally can take a break, and right. then the business suffers because they become too disengaged from it. There's no balance there between between how engaged they need to be to provide for their team and actually still working towards growing it in a in a healthy way. And so they've they've lost that balance. They've just traded one extreme for the other. They were extremely interested. Now they're extremely disinterested. They've just, it, it's not a good place to be. And I'd say most people go through a stage like that when they do go through this final stage. Um, you need to be consciously training your team to be accountable to themselves and to care about the quality of work that they do. Um, otherwise, it, you are just gonna at best maintain the level of growth that you have. You're not gonna continue to grow. And so. Um, this this fourth stage, uh, I'll I'll kind of wrap up quickly. It's 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 training them to be accountable. It's preparing to actually become an absentee owner. It's doing a dry run. I call it a one 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 dry run, where you do one day away from them, one week away from them, and then one month away from them. And if they can handle everything for one month without your input, largely, if there's an emergency, of course. But if they can largely handle it without your input, and the business's numbers are going directionally uh, in the right way. Um, that's usually the time period where you know 
that your team is truly capable of doing this without you and you can start to take much more extended time off like Sarah's done. You can take a summer off. You can take six months off uh, in some rare cases. Most people don't tend to take that long off, but but it's it's possible, right? So so this accountability stage um, is, is, is showing them how to be accountable to themselves. And we can talk about some tactics if you want. It's, it's preparatory stage, preparatory work for actually leaving, and then it's doing those dry runs to ensure that they can do it. Um, but this, this fifth stage I'll mention for 30 seconds maybe if you want me to. Um, it's, it's learning how to grow when you're uninvolved from the business or when you're completely physically absent from it um, and not just maintain that growth. And one of the big things I think is, is and you know, we can cover it again if you want, it's, it's learning how to stay mentally engaged with your business when you're not involved in the day-to-day -day anymore. But there's certain more advanced growth tactics you can use. One that we're using right now, for example, is uh, we're rolling up smaller cleaning companies from owners who've built a solid foundation, but they no longer want to be in the cleaning industry anymore. Um, and so we can open up new office locations in different states um, by approaching owners within a certain revenue range um, and saying, hey, look, you've got great reviews, you've got great teams, you've got a great reputation. Um, would you be interested in uh, passing the mantle on to our team? Um, you can, there's these advanced growth tactics you can actually apply to grow very quickly once you've got a really rock solid team in place who can handle everything for you. There's options that become available that weren't so available before. Um, because before, when, before your team was rock solid, you might have a manager quit and then it's chaos again for six months or you might and we've i'm sure we've all gone through that stage um but yeah yeah so you need to have backups for your backups right you need to have more than one manager trained who can do everything for you you need to have at least two people who can do that you need to have you need to have a certain structure in place that i recommend people have for when disaster strikes that there's always someone who can attend to that disaster um, because often you can have the perfect system in place but if the person who's meant to who's meant to operate the system is absent, then the whole thing falls apart. So once you've got this rock solid office team in place, there's a lot more advanced ways that you can start to grow your business that just weren't available before. So um, there's a whole fifth thing we could talk about later about continuing a trajectory of growth uh, after you're absent, yes. Um, hey, Chris, you mentioned that you uh, recommend a certain structure. Uh, can you share a little bit more about that? Sure. So uh, there's different stages, uh, sorry, there's different structures you're going to need at different stages of growth in your business. So typically, these are all these are all just guidelines. Every business is unique, of course. But generally, I find just because I run a VA company, so we have access to a lot of cleaning businesses that we work with, we generally find most people in the kind of uh, fifteen to fifty thousand dollar a month range do well with one main office manager that they're still working very closely with. There's one person in the office doing much of the phone calls and the emails and managing the scheduling for you, but you're still working fairly closely together. You're meeting at least weekly. You guys are, there's a, there's a rapport between you where you can, you can easily switch stuff between you if you need to. And so that's kind of the first very basic minimalist structure, if you will, for your office is, is you and an office manager or VA and maybe a lead cleaner who can assist sometimes as well with the with the cleaning and the scheduling aspect of it. Um, once you start to get into the, kind of the higher stages of growth, this is like the 50 to $150,000 a month range or so, you're gonna wanna add a second and potentially a third um, office manager to your team. And the way that I recommend people split it up, it's a very clear division of duties. A lot of people will uh, hire a second person with the intent that they have their own um, their own kind of domains in the business that they look after. But then they hit a growth spike, and then they're then then both managers are are doing everything, and then it, it's to chaos again. <laughs> but it's chaos with three people instead of one person, which is even worse because then you don't know who's done what, and that's awful. So what I recommend people do is before they bring on a second and a third person, they have a very clear structure that they adhere to. And and one of the easy ones that that we do at ThinkMaze, for example, is we have a front end person and a back end person. So we have a person, uh, so we have a manager who does front facing tasks. That's anything to do with phones or customer communication or sales. All of that customer brand facing um, stuff, that's done by one person. So they, they're always in that customer facing mindset. And we have a separate person who handles all of the back end parts of the business. 
So that's handling uh, a lot of the teams and scheduling. That's handling some of the hiring. It's handling a lot of the operational materials and the website. Uh, it's handling a lot of um, like payment stuff, right? So all the back end stuff that's actually managing the running of the business is operated by an entirely different person. And they communicate daily, of course, but they, there's, there's a division between uh, what they do. So they absolutely know who should have done what. Um, that's the second part. And at, then at this stage, you're going to want to also have a fairly established team of vendors who are handling the expert stuff for you. You don't want your VA doing marketing for you beyond thumbtack or, or basic lead responses. You're going to want a marketing agency who actually specializes in this exclusively, who's handling your marketing for you. You're going to want, you know, if you're, if you're a little bit bigger, um, you're going to want to have a sales agency or sales executive who would be doing that for you as well. So you want to start building out a team of vendors who, who are not, you know, they're not managers or they're not technically in-house, but they handle one specific thing that they're true experts in. And you know that they've got that part down pat. So this is kind of the basic structure that'll, that'll, you, you can do up to kind of two, even two and a half million in revenue. Um, the, the amount of people might change slightly. It might be two or three or even four office managers, but that basic structure where you have kind of departments within your business and you have a manager of each of those departments remains the same. And so you start to resemble a bigger corporate entity, almost if you will, where you have a sales manager and you have a customer manager and you have a hiring and team manager, you start to resemble that uh, bigger um, template of bigger companies a little bit more closely now where the, everyone's got their thing that they do. So maybe, this is kind of the basic structure. Chris, maybe even like a second location or something like that, correct? Yes. So um, the, again, this is just a guideline, but I tend to find uh, what we're doing is we're doing regional managers. And so you might have a Eastern time manager who handles Eastern locations and you might have a Pacific time manager who handles specific locations. There's so many ways that you can slice it, but 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 the important thing is that you have uh, that you have a manager who knows exactly what locations they're uh, looking after, and they know what their duties are within that location. So um, yes, you can have one manager one location if you want. The only thing I would say would be um, you need to have a solid foundation built out in each of those locations first. Otherwise, that work is going to be distributed to the rest of your team, and then your other locations might start to suffer. And that's not, it's not a good path to go down because that, that might actually make you uh, smaller instead of bigger. So um, ha adding second, third, fourth locations is a talk I want to do at some point with people because it's, it's an art, I feel like. Um, when you're starting a new location, you can start from scratch. You can acquire someone and then, and then rebrand as your company. There's a few different ways you can do it. Um, but in terms of the actual managing multiple locations, I find regional managers are are ha having that as a concept to work with is very helpful. All right, so I'm writing this down because I am going to have you or ask you, uh, plead with you to come back and to talk about how to expand into multiple markets. That's something that not a lot of people have had a lot of success with, right? Very few people have had success, at least in the residential industry, right? Commercial, that's happening all the time. Yeah. But residential has been trickier for a lot of people. So I'm definitely going to have you come back for that if if you can find time. I know six in the morning's early and your dog doesn't like it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll sacrifice. I'll have to send you some bones or something. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but she's right there. Oh, my so God. She's... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she doesn't even look like a puppy because she's just laying there now, right? You don't think of puppies as laying around like that. It's so funny. Um, she looks big for a puppy for people, but actually yeah. she's very small. Her physical body is small because she's a very fluffy dog. The fluff yeah. makes her look big. But but if you if you kind of compress the fluff and, and hold her, she's tiny. <laughs> Still. Dog. Yeah. She's sweet. <laughs> I definitely have a cat like that. And we, um, every once in a while, she'll get really matted. I'll go on a trip or something. She'll get matted and we'll have to shave her. And she's uh, yeah. like, just this little tiny cat where it falls. It's huge. Yeah. Where did it all go? You know? yeah. Where's the hair? <clears throat> all right. So what, what should we talk about? We have nine minutes left, Chris. Where do you think we would best, best um, use this time? Um, well, um, okay. Could we, um, I'd like to mention two very quick 
very quick points on the expansion front, just to kind of maybe perhaps as a teaser for our next talk that, that people might want to think about. Um, and I, I'd love to I'd love to give you guys a, a like a business and life update for a minute because I, I apologize I didn't give that in the beginning. I might I I've got something pretty cool coming for people that I think might be fun, but I don't I'm not I'm not here to mention it if that's not okay. Um, no, no, I'd love I'm, to talk about the same thing. I'm excited. Um, yeah. Sure. So, well, the, the, the two things that I want to mention quickly are um, in terms of expansion, the hardest part is, isn't expanding correctly. It's actually the tax stuff. It's the accounting and the bureaucratic stuff, because when you expand to different regions and states, it's it's all those states and city licenses and all the insurance that you have to have for that. There's there's so much tax and accounting stuff that you have to do when you do this. It is truly overwhelming. Like. Even if you have a good tax team, they're going to be emailing you every day for signatures and filling out forms, and it's really annoying. Um, so, so just, just I just want to share that with people, just to say, if you're thinking about expanding, um, I, I cannot overstate the uh, time investment that you're going to have to give initially when you do expansions. If you do it legally and properly, you're going to have to give a lot of yourself um, to do this. So, so just be sure that that's the path that you want to go down because it's a time suck like no other. Um, so that's that's a big one. Um, and the last thing I wanted to say, I just wanted to return for just 10 seconds to the kind of third stage when you're building out your admin team and you're teaching them to be accountable. There's yeah. a principle that I, I, I live by with my team that I think is very helpful principle for people to use um, when they're when they're encouraging their team to handle um, mistakes or accidents in the business and get confident handling issues. And it's this you should you should never, ever punish someone for an accident. You should you should only nurture them when an accident happens. So if they deliberately do something wrong, of course there you know there's consequences for that. But if there's a genuine accident that someone made, um, and it maybe cost you some money or it cost you a, a recurring client which you worked hard to get, don't punish them for that. But you have to actually guide them through the correct way to do it, and you might have to do that many times. It's it's it, you have to facilitate a positive environment where they're actually encouraged and enjoy the independence because if they're stressed out by the independence and worried that they're going to make a mistake when they're when you're not there they're not going to do a good job because they're afraid to actually put themselves out there and manage the business because they're always going to be looking back to you for approval and so so i just i want to make sure that when you're building your team out you have that mindset of, of not like a punishment mindset, but more of a nurturing mindset with these people, because these are the people who are allowing you to live the life that you can now live. And, so, and you need to keep that in mind. Yeah, I like the word nurture too. Yeah. I, I tend to think in terms of celebrating um, mistakes and errors because great opportunities to for that person to learn the lesson at a it's similar to the way the owner learned the lesson. You know, you had a mistake, you learn the lesson, and now you you start to fix it because you have a, a visceral feeling of how bad it was. And so uh, when your managers have that celebration is, for me, is in order. It's like, <laughs> you're getting the owner mindset right there. Yeah, that's what it feels like. Good job. <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not easy, but don't worry. You're going to come out of this better than you were before, so. so and, and just remember that you're not the one being shouted at anymore. So you have to be pay, you have to be kind and patient with them too, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. if they're getting shouted at by the customer and then shouted at by you, they're not gonna stay very long. No, <laughs> so true, Chris. Yep, you got that right. Wait, we have a somebody, D Felder, and I'm not sure who D Felder is. The name doesn't sound familiar to me, but yeah. hi, D Felder, nice to, <laughs> nice to see you. Um, all right, so you wanted to tell us about something exciting that you're working on, Chris. I am. It's it's very early stage, but I just I just I'm just kind of tentatively getting the word out there because I'm I'm seeing what people are interested in this. But uh, I'm bringing back a book club, a business book club for the cleaning industry that I did a few years ago, uh, and I wanted to just put that out there that I I I really enjoyed doing this. We did this maybe three four years ago with a group of owners, and it was it was a lot of fun where we met together. Um, every week, and we would read through a book every month. And every week we would do like, uh, we'd split the book into four parts. It'd be like part one, two, three, and four instead of chapters. And we'd read through those parts and then we'd meet to discuss that part of the book. And then we'd make an action plan and a summary based off of that part of the book that we would implement into our businesses instead of just moving on to the next book. So so I wanted to mention that. Liz, Liz, Liz. I know. She, she's freaking out because we have a, something that we call book talk. 
that oh, no. it's every Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, we break the book up into four sections, not chapters. Oh, <laughs> we talk about each section. We create an action plan for no our way. business. <laughs> we talk. And here's the funny part, Chris. We just decided yesterday, which is the reason why Denise, like, we just yeah. decided yesterday that we're going to open this up to to a much wider audience. We've been doing it only in our circles. And so, yeah, so it's very, very funny that you are, See what's that the book that we're, 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 we're working on a book right now called uh, Never Split the Difference. Have you heard of that oh, book? Miss Foss, it's a great book. It's, it's so good. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a great book. Um, but too, if you've ever watched his talks. Yes, he's and he's on talk. Facebook. So you can see him. Um, we follow him on Facebook too. So he's, um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've seen him too speak. Uh, how, but how weird is that, Chris? That so you, weird. I, I, it's truly uncanny because I, I did not know if this, if this existed. But we need to. We should definitely talk about it because yes, this I think works for a while, and it's, it's such a fun thing to do with people. There yeah. may be a nice collaboration here, Liz. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to figure something out there, Chris. Um, I will not step on your guys' toes. <laughs> I mean, there's no toes to step on. Books are books. More people reading more books, in my mind, oh, win, right? For sure. so, yeah. I, I tend to read about a book a day. And so I get a little... Uh, I get a little behind sometimes in book talk because we take a month to read one book. And we talk about it a lot throughout that month, but I definitely get a deeper, deeper understanding from the books that we do in book talk because, you know, we, we have that discussion and that we create those action plans. I think we've been doing it for about oh, three years now. Maybe Denise. Oh yeah, I've been seriously involved, really heavily involved for the last year, and I just love it. Really, it it has changed my life. Yeah. Wow, how have I never heard of this? Yeah. Well, <laughs> because, it's, because it's part of our circles. It's only in the circles, but see now we can open it up, and you know, Chris, we'll talk about how we can. Make so this work. That we just decided, literally yesterday. That we're opening up. Yeah. I, I'm doing it. Right? Have you ever heard of Meet Up, Chris? Sorry? Have you ever heard of Meet Up? Meet Up? Yeah. The, the Meet Up, the Meet Up group app, the yeah. communities app. Yeah. So I'm doing some marketing in there. I'm using it as a, a marketing channel. And um, it's one of the things that I'm inviting the meetups to is to book talk on Tuesdays. Oh, so, cool. okay. so just so great minds, great minds, Chris. I you think know, the universe we, is yeah, something. Yeah. I think we have Chris as a you know host or presenter. I mean, the information Chris has will like be incredible. Yeah. For our we might just have two, right? Maybe Chris, you're doing yours on Thursday. We're doing ours on Tuesday, and we get two books. Mm -hmm. You know me, I'd love that. I got two books in a month, right? That'd be good. For me. <laughs> um, good. I'm liking this. Yes. But I'm, I'm thinking that this was meant to be that you're on here today. So we're talking about book talk. And then we're also talking about Escape from Freedom, right? Eric Fromm. Yes, I've yes. also heard about it yeah. just twice. I mean, this is meant to be here. Well, oh, yeah. we'll add the Fromm book to book talk. It's a good idea, Don. Great idea. I don't know what we have on for, for July, but we can probably trade it out. It's probably. <laughs> it's so good, especially if a lot of your inner circle are are doing the whole remote thing, they'll get a lot of value out of it. It really, Wonderful. it's good for that crowd and it's good for the crowd who who want who want something, some meaning in their business, I think. It's very good for that. Almost everybody, right, yeah. want meaning in their business, even if they're not remote or trying to become absentee, who doesn't want more meaning in their business? Right. And more meaning in their life. It sounds like it's about having more than just your, your business, right? Yes, yes. So it's not, just to clarify, it is a kind of a little bit of a dense older psychological book it's not it's not like a self development book at all so there's no there's no like goals of the book it's an exploration but i found the exploration to be very deep and very very relevant for our times and the way that we do business and and what people want out of their lives now and and kind of this directionlessness that a lot of people have now 
it's a yeah. very it's a very important book in that sense i think so so just just to just to just to preface that you know if you go into it it's a lot <laughs> well, it sounds like it's kind of a timeless book which is really interesting okay. right because i know it's you an know, older book but it's about balancing you know your life and your life has many parts to it family business what have you self care and so i love that i'm going to download that book this afternoon <laughs> Good job, good job. Good job. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Kelly. I, I appreciate the comment too. It's yeah. it was fun. Um, I did it. <laughs> I I did the same thing as you. I did an initial week many years ago in Japan, and that was the moment that clicked for me, where it was like, wow, this this can work. So so thank you for that, Kelly. Kelly's husband is from Japan. They moved over here, and um, I know that us. Well, you know, it's a challenge when you're trying to do any of these things. But Kelly has since moved on to doing some other really amazing and fun yeah. stuff. So, mm, she she is, work, right? She yeah. Work. I haven't seen Kelly around in a while, but our time has kind of come to an end. It yeah. has. We are past it. If Tom was here right now, he would have already shut us down and been like, what are you guys doing? Got to get off the get off the call. All right, Chris, I'm going to have Sarah reach out to you about this thing that I told you about and let's try and get you back on. That sounds amazing. Something I haven't heard anybody really talking much about. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you so much, Chris. Do you have any last thoughts, anything else that you'd like to share before we head out of here? No, but what I, I can do on, on, on the book club run, if you want, is I, I can send a separate email or a Facebook message and we can, we can make something fun for people to happen. If so. it would, that'd be awesome. That'd sure. be great. Sounds cool. great. Thank so, you so much. Don't take your puppy Thank you as always, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Take care.